Um, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thanks for coming to, uh, today. Um, we are here to talk about uh, regional hubs within the Wikimedia movement, the opportunities and challenges for open uh, collaboration. So, uh, for that, we have here in person three uh, guests, and one is also virtual. Um, I'm going to ask. Uh, you to introduce yourself uh, uh, a bit and yeah and and uh, yeah okay so everyone has introduced them okay hi everyone my name is Barbara I'm uh, I'm from Croatia and I'm working for a Central and Eastern European hub hello everyone uh, I'm Valentina I'm from Italy and I'm representing Wikimedia Europe Hi, I'm Butch Bustria. Uh, I represent the East, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific region. But though, though I'm not in the governance, but I'll be happy to give some perspective about our region, yes. And the guy online can hear us? Hello? Yeah, sorry. I, I am Galahad. Uh, I, I, I am the internet coordinator of the LACHOP and a general coordinator of the Wikimedia projects. And I am um, streaming from Venezuela. Yeah. So, uh, to start, the first uh, question uh, in this, this session will, will be uh, uh, we, we, we will have three uh, questions. So, uh, we will have time for answering questions uh, at the end. Um, and the, f the, f the first one is uh, according to your own experience, What's the importance of the hubs in the regional communities? So, um, and you, you can explain a, a, a little bit uh, about it. So, the, f the first uh, CEAA. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so as I'm re representing um, Central and Eastern European hub, uh, about the importance. Well, um, in Central and Eastern Europe, we have more than 35 communities, more than 20 languages. And some of these communities are well, well developed. They have their user groups, chapters, so they are affiliates. In some other countries, you have only um, community, which is sometimes less or more active. And in some countries, you only have like volunteers who work separately from one another. So the importance of the hub or initiative that is kind of a bit above, not above in a sense that it's dictating something, but it's something larger than your own um, national community. The importance of hub is here because it can offer some services and um, and opportunities that you, in the framework of your own national one, if it exists or if it doesn't exist then especially, that you can't receive. So the importance is here because we can cover and support both communities and individuals in the ways that they can't be supported only by their co local community or even affiliate. Okay, the next one, Wikimedia Europe. Yeah, um, so Wikimedia Europe is uh, quite a young organization, um, but it leverages the experience of the Free Knowledge Advocacy Group uh, in Europe, uh, which for 10 years uh, has analyzed uh, and uh, uh, informed uh, communities in Europe about uh, policy uh, that could affect uh, their work. Uh, and um, with this uh, experience, we think that, um, well, we, we leverage that, that experience and we think that our, import, our role is basically to provide uh, a louder and a unified uh, voice uh, to the communities uh, that gave us the mandate uh, to do so. Uh, and we also have the, the importance of our uh, of our organization is also re also relies on the fact that we can mobilize uh, communities uh, and as well pool resources uh, and also optimize op optimize them. Um, for ESIAP, uh, it is uh, really important because usually uh, ESIAP usually is the last mile uh, in terms of information because uh, most of the time when whenever there is a global uh, um, virtual meeting or, or whatever communication, usually we are not able to attend because it's on our, on, add on our time zones. Uh, we're from the time zone uh, plus uh, uh, 
5.5 until U, uh, UTC 13. So usually uh, we were not that able to attend in a global conversation. So we converged all together as one and uh, started with a, a conference uh, in Bali. And from there, we forged our uh, conversation to make it formal uh, to be a, 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 a hub. And uh, recently, uh, just before Wikimania, we just uh, signed a declaration statement uh, confirming that we are a hub uh, with a, a com complete with mission, vision, core values, and a strategic direction. So we are now uh, with the uh, uh, with REC here with the uh, the preparatory council. We're trying to do our uh, own charter. And uh, hopefully, uh, we would be able to mobilize uh, the uh, structure of uh, operation of a hub. Uh, yeah. For OK, thank you. Yeah, and now, now the, uh, go ahead. Latin um, America. OK, so. Uh, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean currently lacks a dedicated organization to support volunteers, uh, volunteer communities, uh, leading to overlapping efforts uh, um, it, and the emergency of new growth uh, about that. Uh, this, is, this deficit in regional collaboration is evident in decision-making bodies like, uh, like the, the board, like the EUC, a coordination committee um, and and in in, in elections like like uh, the two form uh, to, to two actual elections like the board elections and the coordination uh, election no uh, and of course the MCDC conversations so uh, and of, of obviously the allocation of uh, regional funds. Uh, which hampers influence within the movement, uh, which hampers uh, within the movement. Establish a who could enhance support, equity, clarity, and empathy with, with uh, neglecting these aspects might have, uh, might leave important issues unresolved. Un okay, thank you so much. Uh, for the second round, about uh the challenges faced by hubs in regional environments. Um, as you already know, we have three types of hubs, uh, linguistic uh, hubs and about uh, them thematic uh, hubs and this uh, topic about uh, regional um, hubs. Um, and this topic is very important uh, for, for other regions where there is no uh, regional uh, have already, so we want to know more about uh, what are the challenges that you have faced uh, by have in this in, in your own uh, regional environment. So it's your your personal opinion or your. Well, this is like really a big topic. Um, not to say that there are more challenges than opportunities, but um, I will now talk from our perspective from Central Eastern Europe. Just the fact that we are covering more than 35 very diverse communities with different stage of development means that we have to be in constant communication, fo following up, and these ne needs of each of these community can be very different. On the other side, it's not that we have like 10 staff members. We have uh, currently, we have two full staff members. And then during this year, we have also a few part-time staffers who are then covering specifically some communities. But um, there are many topics um, that have to be covered and things that have to be done. And obviously, with this amount of staff members, you can't be at the same time following too many things. Um, one of the challenges also was, well, we are starting from scratch. We are building something new. There are no, there is no, there are no guidelines how to do it, from where to start. So it was. It, it took some time also to establish processes of our steering committee, how its steering committee works with employees. Then also, although we had approved grant, yearly grant, and we function according to that grant, and those activities that we do are important, it was also important to then get feedback from communities and then reassess some of these activities and make them more custom-made and fit the context. Then 
obviously in some communities you have better response in some less but because volunteers can change it doesn't mean that if this month you didn't get some feedback or response from some community that you are giving up. You have to continue. So it really requires a lot of effort in, in different areas. Um, for us, we kind of, after making the first research, after this research was done about needs assessment in the CE, we decided to focus on administration, programmatic and communication related activities. And this is the timeline that we are following. But um, yeah, um, Challenges are numer numerous and we are trying to overcome them together with communities and then also in cooperation with steering committee and wider group because we have regular meetings every two weeks with group that is like 15, 20 people and all decisions or plans are discussed, communicated and uh, we compare our opinions and then try to find a common ground. Um, I couldn't be more aligned with what you were saying, <laughs> uh, Barbara. Um, we also think that one of our main challenges is that we are actually starting uh, right now our work and we know that we want to support our communities uh, at our best, but we don't know yet what the, the strategy is, uh, what the best strategy is to support our communities. So we are studying, we are testing, we are learning from the feedback of our communities uh, and we are structuring uh, the path uh, that we think is the most appropriate uh, to support our communities. Um, and uh, along with that, of course, there are all the um, challenges regarding communication, uh, constant communication with 29 members that we are now, uh, and, and so on. And there is also a, a challenge uh, regarding sustainability, uh, sustainability in many different uh, areas and aspects. Uh, I'm, I'm a fundraising fundraiser, so I, I especially refer to, uh, of course, funds, Finance. finances. Uh, and that I think it's a common challenge for everyone here. Yes, uh, for ECAP is, uh, ECAP is actually composed of different uh, and uh, I mean, very diverse uh, communities, uh, language, even the scripts that uh, uh, that we have to go through, um, religion, and uh, of course uh, the uh, time zones. So uh, again, it's it's really hard to to do a virtual meetup, a virtual meeting, because uh, I have to do a a Goldilocks zone between uh, New Zealand and Myanmar. And uh, also, uh, we need to make sure that the, co the message would be conveyed in various languages, uh, Korean, Chinese, uh, Thai, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, those who are also understanding uh, English. And, and also, uh, the, the challenge is actually uh, discussing governance in a very long time. We started uh, tackling about the governance of a hub way back when it was uh, first initiated at uh, around 2020 and it's already four years and some already started to get out because they're already exhausted about that uh, i think uh, discussing about uh regional governance uh but what uh, what we could do uh, what what we normally do to somewhat motivate them is to make sure our ECAP conference is regularly held in uh, alternating years uh, we have a conference uh, in uh, uh, in even years, and then uh, we have a strategy summit uh, on odd years. So our uh, strategy summit, which will happen in my hometown in Manila, uh, will be quite a challenge. Uh, we're in, uh, we'll be, they will be facing a typhoon or, or a monsoon, but uh, uh, what, what is important is uh, the, uh, uh, the future of the, uh, the hub will be in place. And uh, we're, we're very... Uh, uh, privilege that uh, we have been guided by uh, Wikimedia Foundation through uh, Karel uh, in uh, the discussion about the work governance. I'm, I, for now, uh, was the, no longer part of the governance structure of uh, ECAP uh, because I was, uh, we, I, we don't call it distraction, but we, we exhausted our energy in Wikimania 2023 because this is a, the first, uh, uh, first time that a hub will be doing organizing a, a large conference uh, 
And then after we have uh, concluded uh, Wikimania, we focus now in uh, making sure our structure will be in place. Uh, that's why we have Rec here uh, of uh, Wikimedia Taiwan, uh, Vange, and Robert, uh, I think, uh, will be coming tomorrow uh, to make sure that the, the structure of the hub will be in place because we don't have a budget right now uh, because we need to make sure that uh, there is a a proof of concept or or a a, a, a governance document that we could show uh, before we apply for a grant okay uh, latin america yeah uh, i think that the, the most challenges uh, face with be the lack of uh, would be the lack of interest of the regional communities in the creation of hubs. This would be based in, in the lack of the of the interest about the mobile charter. So uh, the regional communities ask why will why will need a, a hub in in, in in first place, you know? So uh, and uh, the lack of interest in discussing government's models or, or clear objectives. The mindset or the regional perspective about uh, uh, the regional communities is to establish something without prior discussion. It's like, uh, I, will, I will join, uh, for example, I will join the, the lack hub if everything, uh, the governance, the objectives, etc., etc. So uh, it's a kind of difficult about this because the hubs needs a, a, a discussion phase. So uh, it's it's a, a, a very a tricky about this. <clears throat> um, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, this, the third round is about the future perspective of regional communities in relation to hubs. So maybe you can tell us about uh, what are your projections uh, to work uh, with, with within the movement in relation with the, with your own uh, regional communities. If you have any goals about it, uh, or what are you planning in the future, in the short future, or in the, in the long term um, about this topic, the future um, related okay. also with this uh, topic, the Wikimedia. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the main things, uh, or s uh, our main focus actually when thinking about Hub was how to provide support to less organized and smaller communities. So definitely with having Hub, which is like in our case established and functioning, smaller communities in the region are really now able to get more concrete support. We, we had previous session where we were mentioning some of the things. So we have micro grants in the region, we have concrete capacity development for some communities. But definitely uh, with having Hub here, it's possible to do more, provide more support, and to enable those smaller ones to really feel supported and to grow in the way they sit fit. Uh, I'm again repeating, C Hub is not here to dictate or to decide where each community should go. It's up to local small community. But we are here to provide, well, obviously, based on resources that Valentina mentioned, financial and also human resources, we are here to provide support that we are able to and to enable them to then accomplish something more than they could without that. Yes, uh, I'm repeating again, maybe, um, that uh, our main goal in the short midterm is uh, also to make sure uh, that uh, organizations are sustainable uh, in, a, in the same sense that uh, Barbara just mentioned. And uh, I can add uh, something more, which is on, in the long term, um, to uh, we would like to work uh, at a global level, level, so to, to be connected to other communities around the world. And this is something that we can see for uh, in the long term, of course. Uh, and uh, we will work on uh, the role, uh, how to leverage uh, what's been uh, done in Europe to uh, contribute to, um, to, to contribute to this striving movement uh, globally as well. Uh, for ECF, actually, we just need to make sure that uh, uh, the the operation uh, will be codified, and then later on we will s uh, start uh, composing of committees on working on these things. But uh, let me introduce to you uh, Rec from Wikimedia Taiwan. 
uh, she will he will become accompanied with, by a translator uh, for the uh, for details about the future perspective of hubs. Can I invite Rick to come here for a while and with Joyce to translate? Okay, because um, my English is not good enough to <laughs> uh, to to uh, show what uh, what uh, everything I want to say. So I have my yeah church letter. Uh, so the question is. <laughs> A future. OK. Uh, we are currently working to make ESAP have its own website and have a good functioning system. I hope to make it easier to to the 所有人的意見,大家有非常多的想法,那這是我們現在正在努力的事情。Hello, I'm Joyce. I also work for Wikimedia Taiwan, and, and my role in the ESAP Hub is as a translator for REC. So, <laughs> so REC just mentioned that for the ESAP um, Hub, we are currently uh, wanted to get our charter uh, finalized as soon as possible, but we are facing the challenge that we are trying to consolidate different comments from the local community, and we are hoping that in the future we are able to have a functional mechanism to uh, give service to the local community. Is that the final question? Uh, yeah, Galhad. Okay, so um, it, for the perspectives in, in the LAC region and in the LAC community, it uh, will be, first of all, uh, prioritize support for the regional volunteers. On, once this has been a, a, a key, <clears throat> it's foster multilingual collaboration among regional language. Not, not it's only Spanish. We have uh, French, we have English, of course. Uh, we have Portuguese and, uh, and among an, a, a large uh, list of, of language. Of, uh, we, uh, the, we envision a, a promoting a cohesion and support among affiliates and the hub. So it's a collaboration with, between the hub and the, and the regional affiliates. Uh, also, it shifts the focus from uh, the part of preservation about it's only my affiliate and, and nothing, nothing else matters. So uh, uh, to development, of, of collaboration, uh, emphasizing uh, harmonies, uh, turbulation for board. And, and finally, uh, establish a model of, of self-sustainability among the affiliates that incorporates a transparent, equitative, and empathetic decision-making about in, in the, uh, the regional communities, the hub, uh, anything, uh, anything related of the Latin America uh, communities. Okay, so now the next uh, part is about the best engagement between hubs and their communities. So um, you can tell tell us about uh, what's the uh, what are the practice uh, f for the new hubs from the perspective of every hub, and uh, and the scope of collaboration between. Uh, between the um, oh, among, among the hubs, so uh, if you, you you can give us uh, some ideas about it about the future cooperation of hubs and hubs yeah. in making. Yes. Yeah, we. The good thing that I can say that yesterday we tried to have, or even last week we tried to have one of the first meetings ever between uh, regional hubs in making and hubs. So I was really happy that together we were able to really be at the same, well, sp same spot in the same room, people from 
West Africa, East Africa, representatives from also Latin America and Caribbean, Central Eastern European Hub, ECAP, uh, also from Viscom. Um, so that was the, that's that's the first I would say first step. This like getting to know each other and also realizing what are okay. We know what we are doing, but we don't know what others are doing, what they are. So from my perspective and based on Central and Eastern European experience, I would say that we would need. We, we can't just hear about each other via foundation or, or via some other sources. So just some regular meetups would make sense because although each situation is specific and obviously specific to our own region, talking to each other can also make us understand some things. We can support each other and basically we are on the same journey and we are here to support one another. So I'm hoping that this is what we started now since well this week, this collaboration. Uh, and knowing each other personally will will have some results and that we will be able to build something from this. Okay. Um, collaboration is, of course, essential for us. Uh, so uh, we agree completely. Um, we uh, are such a young uh, organization that we still need to learn uh, a lot from all of you. Um, and uh, so this continuous conversation will will allow for that uh, for us as well and also to exchange uh, our views and what our colleagues who set up the organization learned during uh, the last 10 years of uh, the free knowledge advocacy group in the last and two initial years of activities yeah for uh, ECAP we did uh, a uh, for historical context, during the time that uh, we have the pandemic, we used utilize the time to do uh, virtual meetings with uh, the uh, then uh, new hubs being created. CE, uh, I'm sorry, CEE, and then uh, uh, that time with the, with the Latin uh, Latin America and some from uh, Arabic read. I'm sorry, the MENA region. So uh, we we tried to do some benchmarking and uh, see the best practices and then that actually uh, um, help in uh, crafting our um, declaration statement and uh, what will be the best thing that we could contribute to the Wikimedia movement. Uh, not working as islands and, uh, and uh, cooperating uh, multilaterally and uh, globally. But uh, for, for the future, I think I would be best if I could give to Rec his uh, personal perspective on his first meeting with the other hubs. Uh, Chi So um, as ECAP, uh, we actually have already uh, um, have a great uh, milestone, which you see as the Wikimania last year in Singapore. And we are now all in the same starting point as the hub. We used to um, focus on more individually in our own um, country or community. And now we will have more chances to have a cross regional and cross hubs uh, conversation. and will be uh, having more chances to face the same challenging and experience and find new um, new futures together. Okay, okay. Uh, about the scope of collaboration between hubs, I think uh, I think it will be better to develop an initiative that serves the communities of each hub and extend and extend beyond as a sole focus of Wikipedia. For example, uh, we have uh, the the yearly uh, Wiki Love Monuments, and uh, we we can transform as a sample of uh, Wiki Voyage Love Monuments or Wiki Source Love Monuments, etc. So, uh, if we, we if we can uh, step uh, step outside of the 
of the mainstream of, about activities, uh, we can uh, we can have more uh, be more and better col uh, collab uh, and better collaboration, and we'll uh, we'll have more cohesion about the about the hubs. So, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And now the last part uh, and do the lack of time. We don't just have a couple minutes more. Uh, each attendee is uh, kindly invited to uh, make some questions uh, to any uh, attendee. Uh, so if, if you, you. Hello. So earlier in in this room, we had a very unpleasant, I would say, or <laughs> aggressive meeting about the the charter. Um, so in that context, the question uh, occurred to me listening to what you said. Uh, do you, and it's a question for any of you, but I'm specifically looking at Wikimedia Europe because uh, you're an advocacy group. So I I do think there are more opportunities there for you, but. Have you considered whether uh, hubs or, m or multinational organizations in Wikimedia space are more likely to uh, to obtain external funds than national affiliates? And do you plan to, to do that? <laughs> Thank you for your question. And it's really uh, the right question for me, because I'm a fundraiser, so ha, lucky me. Um, well, yes, we have considered that. Um, we are uh, actually starting, among the, all the activities that we are testing and, and trying to improve and etc. we are testing how we can support um, the affiliates uh, to also incubate, through also incubating uh, some projects to receive external funding uh, from third uh, parties. Let's say, uh, and that's one of the different um, strategies uh, that we are uh, testing. Uh, and we, at the same time, we are also uh, trying to support uh, the uh, affiliates locally to um, increase their chances to receive funding individually, and also to cooperate between each other with our support to receive funding from other sources, not only national ones but also international ones. And also, for example, the European ones uh, from the European Commission. Um, so we are considering, uh, of course, we'll be testing out uh, all these. And I hope it's, it re responds to your question for the moment. And uh, happy to, to discuss it further uh, whenever you want. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to add briefly on behalf of uh, Central and Eastern European Hub. As you know, we are not registered entity, so as such we can't apply for any funds. But we, as part of our work, is also exploring this financing from third parties, not to focusing exclusively on Wikimedia Foundation as a source of, well, income or our budget. Last year we tested collaboration between Wikimedia Sweden and uh, Wikimedia Ukraine, Poland and Georgia, and together with Hub, we were writing one joint project proposal for external funder, uh, it's Swedish Institute. So we managed to get seed funding of 40,000 euros. So um, yeah, I think it's possible to get funds, but it's definitely, in our case, how I see it, it wouldn't be for existence of hub, but it would be for programmatic work that um, then uh, communities are doing. And uh, this definitely can be done, but it really requires resources, like someone who is being paid as fine raise, uh, fundraiser, uh, obviously. Hi everyone, Pasita Rada, Wikimedia New York City. Um, so my question is about um, what are the arguments that you've heard against hubs and what have you been your response to those arguments? So far for ESEP we didn't receive any negative uh, connotations on hubs. Actually they, they welcome hubs. But uh, let me ask uh, the people from Europe. Yeah, I also, I, I'm now really like intensively thinking like something negative I haven't heard, but I, but it's uh, typical in, in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, it's to, to question things like, is it really necessary? Does it cost too much? Are there some other ways? Um, is really these activities that you should be focusing now, not something else? So 
I heard those questioning and we were debating and we are constantly, well, also ourselves asking, uh, asking ourselves, is this the best way because we are testing and, uh, but uh, no, nothing negative. It's more like, okay, we are in this together. We are um, collaborating as a region. Let's try to do something more than we, that we can on ourselves, by ourselves. Oh, a lot. Yeah, okay, okay. So you and you. Um, my name is Delphine, and I am advisor to the CE Hub, and I've been uh, working with Wikifranca as well, um, which is another francophone hub. I think uh, one of the things that came uh, a lot as hubs were developing, especially the CE hub, which is kind of a pilot, uh, was about, oh, yet another layer of right another kind of like complicated thing etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think that uh, at least what i can see of how the ce hub is functioning has been <clears throat> very lean in terms of uh, what kind of things it happens. It doesn't interfere in the governance. It doesn't uh, add a layer of governance uh, to uh, uh, to what people were afraid of. There was a lot of, of discussion around this, around the charter. And I think that, to me, at least this one, uh, which, uh, the CE Hub is the only one that is a, a, a hub in that thing. Uh, Wikimedia Europe is a bit different because it has a, a, um, a governance structure which the hub has but very kind of lean and and volunteer driven and based and not even uh, an organization. So I think that this to me so far has been kind of an, an needed fear in terms of how much uh, kind of complex if complexifying the whole thing uh, a hub could be. I think it's, it's actually been uh, pretty much more supportive than it has been complexifying the whole uh, governance structure. Okay. You, you, you then Thank you. Uh, just to ask for your recommendation to begin to begin a new hub because at Latin America we was waiting the appropriate moment to begin the construction of the of the hub. Uh, we was well, one majority of the big chapters and organization affiliates had the opinion that we need to wait the approbation or no ratification of the charter. But I want to hear your recommendation to begin this 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 effort, no? Because uh, we are thinking that we have previous existence of initi an initiative in Latin America and other countries of Europe. So maybe uh, I want to hear what's the best route or your lessons or your feedback after founding a, a hub and the uh, things that we need to avoid to, to fail in the effort. Thank you. Um, I can start, but I think like even on behalf of Central Eastern European Hub, Delphine will again be like really good person to answer. And I will tell you why. Um, this all in Central Eastern Europe didn't start with uh, with getting uh, first year grant and then uh, employing uh, me. Uh, it started way before with uh, bi-weekly meetings, getting together, collaborating, talking, discussing. And Delphine was part of that. She was also part of not only Delphine, Michal is here, I see it, sorry Michal. So several people in this room, I think also Clara there, a uh, few steering committee members and advisory members are here. Uh, so this collaboration started way before and uh, I think it would be really good to hear from them and their perspective, what kept them interesting and intrigued enough to meet and what was their goal, what they had in mind. Delphine and Michal, maybe. Um, Clara is also there. I think maybe she will answer for the CE Hub, but I, I can answer for Wikifranca because uh, we are in that phase of, of uh, thinking about, I don't know if Georges is around or anyone else from, from Wikifranca. Um, but basically, the first thing that we did is uh, we got a grant uh, from the foundation to uh, support a needs assessment. And really trying to think, you know, uh, what is the what is the need in the region? What is the need in the in the whatever thematic uh, for us? It's a French-speaking hub, for example. So, what are, what are the needs of the community? And then, uh, how do you develop that uh, uh, into something that is more uh, structured? But I think uh, Clara might be uh, better to to answer for the CE hub. She was there more than I was. Um, the question was how to start. Yeah, um, I think C Hub. It's uh, it works just before, like even before. It it worked as like community thanks to C Spring competition, thanks to gatherings we had. Even though it wasn't always like rainbow and and reindeers and whatever we had our issues and we still have but i think what was 
the most important from my point of view is that we wanted to do the actual work. It, it, like the starting the hub, we still doesn't have uh, organization, we are not incorporated, but we wanted to uh, follow the needs of the community. And Wikimedia Poland started uh, with a great survey that really tracks like, or like um, ask all of the communities in the region, what are their actual needs? What uh, what capacities they they're missing? What capacities could be uh, supported from above? What is missing in between WMF and their everyday job, everyday work? So this was something that was essential when we started all of that because we then could discuss, okay, this is like the outcomes out of it. And so if I can recommend something, it would be exactly this. Try to find your network, <laughs> try to find your people. And like, uh, I think without this, it will be really like, again, some strength. And um, and we we have some like governance system, which is quite easy. We always like present, do you want this? We, we are very open, we are transparent. We are a bunch of like friends and we are very inviting everyone who can be on our regular meetings, our board or like steering committee meetings are totally open. We are not, I, I may recall one vote in last 24 months. So like, yeah, so that's, sorry. Th thank Long. you so much, Clara, for the explanation. Uh, so just uh, the last question, uh, we are out of time, but uh, you can go ahead if you want. Where's the microphone? <laughs> Colleagues, how come is Africa not there? We actually tried to send the email to Winnie. She didn't reply. I'm the timekeeper. I just realized that I've been raising my hand, standing there, positioning ourselves, then it means it's important. Please, next time when the conversations about how it happens, involve us. Very, very, very important. We want to sit there and explain to the people, you know, our challenges, you know, yeah. Whatever we I, I just, I, anyway. just want, I know that this is that um, I want to add something. On Thursday, we have again a very similar session that is organized by uh, well Philip, but he's not here, so by us. And we invited everyone. Mail is sent, so I hope that really everyone, uh, all regional hub representatives, will show up. Ruby's, we sent well everyone who was on the list, and also yesterday got the email. So we are asking everyone interested also to join. It will be a longer session and really enough time to get. Uh, well, to discuss everything, because really want everyone to be present and discuss. So I'm the timekeeper. I have to chase out of you, all of you out of this room. Okay, bye. <laughs> Please, okay. round of applause.